Again, I am Representative Corey Wilson, and I proudly represent District 56, which is part of Augusta. It is an honor to uh, appear before you today to, to present LD 30, uh, three, excuse me, 345, I've said that a thousand times, an act to ensure the confidentiality of concealed uh, weapons permit holder information. This legislation is being proposed after what I feel is oversight of the legislature and was brought to my attention. That oversight is that personally identifying information of individuals who have concealed handguns permits is public information. I was not aware of this until a problem existed in a neighboring state. In the state of New York, a newspaper requested the personal information of all individuals with concealed weapons permits. This information was then published in the newspaper and posted on their website, which contained an interactive map that displayed where all the individuals lived. This led to threats on individuals who were employed as corrections officers, judges, and police officers. After this happened, it was brought to my attention that this information is also public in the state of Maine. And that same situation could occur here. After such, as such, I submitted this bill as a preventative measure to protect those Mainers. After the legislation was submitted, I had numerous discussions with individuals and received broad bipartisan support. The result was a total of 63 co-sponsors within just a day or so. However, there were some concerns. I had one legislator suggest to me that just because this happened in New York, it does not mean that it will happen in Maine. It was proven to be wrong when the Bangor Daily News requested this data. Although they did rescind their request, an anonymous request was promptly made for the same information. After these requests were made, Many people were left living in fear, which I will address in just a moment. This led to an emergency bipartisan legislation to be enacted on a temporary basis that protects these individuals. This measure received broad support on both sides of the aisle. After the temporary measure was passed, I had discussions with many individuals. I had women who were victims of domestic violence re reach out to me and thank me for proposing the legislation. I had police chiefs from across the state reach out and thank me for submitting the legislation. Some people have questioned if there's a sincere public safety concern here. While I am not a public safety expert, nor am I a police officer, the fact that all police chiefs in the state of Maine that I'm aware of support this initiative should be a testament to the fact that this is a public safety issue. I have heard from legislators that wish to allow certain groups of individuals to remain confidential but not allow it for all citizens. The most common groups are victims of domestic violence, rape victims, retired police officers, and judges. While I agree with them that these individuals should be protected, I do not believe that we should stop there. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, Office of Justice Programs Family Violence Statistics, only 60% of, viol of domestic violence victims are reported. The majority, 73% of, of them, uh, are female. Although 60% of these crimes are reported, only a small portion of them ended conviction and a subsequent sentence involving, involve, involving jail time. What about the other 40%? Shouldn't they be protected or should they have to live in fear of being located because of a lack of legislative willpower? Furthermore, I see a failure of this legislature to protect all victims, not just those with the strength to report their crimes as a direct assault on women. Statistics of rapes and sexual assaults from the U.S. Department of Justice offer further evidence that we need to cover all citizens, not just those who report their crime. 61% of rapes and sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Those rapists, of course, never serve a day in jail. If the rape is reported to police, there is a 50.8% chance that that arrest will be made. That's only half of them that are actually reported. If an arrest is made, there's an 80% chance of prosecution. If there is a prosecution, 58% chance of them resulting in a felony conviction. If there is a felony conviction, there's a 69% chance that the convict will spend time in jail. So even in the 39% of rapes that are actually reported to police, there's only a 16.3% chance a rapist will end up spending any time in prison. Factoring in unreported rapes, about 6% of rapes 
That's only one in about 16 of rapists will ever spend a day in jail. 15 out of the 16 will walk free. Shouldn't the 61% of rape victims be entitled to the same confidentiality as those who did not, who, who did report their crime? Or should we also have them living in fear? It is my opinion that we should protect them too, but how do we do that? On the honor system? <coughs> These people have been through enough. There have been suggestions made that we should not be setting a precedent by exempting this information from FOIA. Let me make this clear. We are not setting a precedent. There are 483 other exemptions, so if there was a precedent, it's already been set. In the interest of allowing the committee to ask questions, I will conclude by simply saying this. This is a public safety issue, and we as legislators should want to protect the public. These individuals are not criminals. They are law-abiding citizens who have passed federal, state, and local background checks every four years. They are not the individuals that we need to fear, and they should be protected. After all, what is the point of having a concealed handguns permit if everybody knows that you have it? Thank you for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the committee may have at this time.